All right. Hi. Really? Everybody doing well? All right. I'm loaded. I've broken the first rule. I brought a drink. I didn't know the rule until I already was committed. Um, I've got some notes, and I'm going to need these to read. But I'm going to take you through uh, a couple of points uh, sort of to the opening about what's going on in IT, what's going on with data information, and the security around it, which is quite a dynamic uh, part of the worldwide economy and IT. Now, first is an intro. I want to give sort of my name and address. I'm Mark Hurd. I'm CEO of Oracle. I'm from the Silicon Valley. So whatever you think of the Silicon Valley, I'm, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's great to be here awake. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, our company. We have uh, roughly 40 billion of, of revenue. We have 150 billion of market capitalization. So that's, that's big. I'd, I'd hate to mention uh, here because this isn't a competitive forum, but it's the largest market cap in enterprise IT. I just thought I had to say that. Um, we manage about 50% of the world's data that's in companies. So we're really a B2B company. We were founded by a, a programmer named Larry Ellison. Have you heard, I don't know if you've heard of Larry, because Larry's not in the consumer world, but think of what Steve Jobs really was to consumer. Larry is to the enterprise. Company started with a relational database, basically storing and querying data, and it's built into what today is Oracle, which is a very large company doing applications, uh, infrastructure, leader in the cloud, uh, et cetera. And I'm actually the CEO uh, of the company today. So that's sort of our, uh, resume for being able to talk about this subject. All right, let's talk a little bit about economies. Now, all of you here are a great university, and you probably followed the years of different economies and how they've evolved. There was an agrarian economy that lasted for centuries. And what drove that economy? Land. Who owned it? Who controlled it? That morphed into an industrial economy. That was driven by lots of commodities, iron being the primary one. Those that had iron, those that could mine it, those that could turn it into products, uh, ran really the economy. If you look back into sort of the, really all the way up to the beginning of this century, the industrial economy was, was flourishing. I'm here to posit to you that today, this century, we're in an information economy. The world is driven by information. If you don't know, I'm sure you woke up this morning thinking about worldwide GDP. Uh, it's about $75 uh, trillion. IT is $2 trillion of it, only 3%. But without that 3%, you really can't do much of the rest. IT is now intertwined and in information into virtually everything we do. And data is the driver of that information economy. Data, you can't trade it on the New York Mercantile Exchange but people are buying and selling data at a rate that we've never seen before. I'm gonna to talk to you about that. Okay, have you ever heard this term terabyte? Petabyte? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever heard this before? Okay, if you have, I, I appreciate the energy coming from the crowd. Um, <laughs> somebody might say, before I get into terabytes and petabytes and what they are, let me tell you what a terabyte is. A terabyte is a filing cabinet or filing cabinets lined up from Winston-Salem to Los Angeles. That is one single terabyte. Once you get past a terabyte, you get to a thing called petabyte. And then imagine that, oh nice, that is a thousand, thousand terabytes. Once you get past a petabyte, you're going to get to a thing called an exabyte. And I'm sure you've already figured out, that's a thousand petabytes. Now you're going to hear a thing called zettabytes. And I won't define that other than to say it's just a lot of data. Okay? It's a lot of data. On the planet right now, people estimate there's about 18 of these zettabytes worth of information. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, and it is roughly doubling every two years. So think about it. Whatever the data is today, half of the data in the world was created in the last 24 months. Some of that driven by all of you in this room. By the time we get to 2020, we're going to wind up with something like 45 
We've got 44 on the chart because it's so precisely accurate. <laughs> Zettabytes worth of data. This is enormous. Is this good news or bad news? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on. This data is ubiquitous. Uh, tough chart. I'm not sure if it's easy to read. But what I did was I picked up a few consumer brands that I thought you would know. Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, basic stuff you know of, and the amount of sheer data that they're creating. Now, they're doing two things. They're providing a service to you. At the same time, they're taking your data, and they're using it. In some cases, they're selling it. Selling it so that people can deliver better service to you but basically so that you can be accessible. This data is accessible now by virtually everyone everywhere. And by the way, if there's no message I leave you with today, the internet forgets nothing. Forgets nothing. I'll come back to that. Now, let's go next, next chart. So major sources of data all over the place, but they come from three core groups. Data is generated by government. They generally have services that have the responsibility to protect its citizens. They have infrastructure of a country. They collect information on defense, transportation, etc. Companies, companies that are trying to sell you products. They'd love to sell you more products. They want to cross-sell you, they want to upsell you, and they want to deliver to you better service. So companies want to collect a lot of data about us so they can better sell to us and better market to us. And then there's individuals. They are, by the way, the biggest generators of data today. Many of you in the room, you're out posting things all the time. Those are used. Those are analyzed. Those are meant to sell or, or measured to sell to you so people can hopefully do a better job of servicing to you and selling to you. You're going to hear a fourth source of data that's going to evolve over the next several years. And it is machine talking to machine, cars talking to computers, refrigerators talking to computers. Imagine being at the grocery store. You don't have a shopping list. You just talk to your refrigerator. How much milk is there? How many eggs are there? You're going to see the same thing with capabilities talking to oil wells, 10,000 sensors on an oil rig, all telling you if everything is working. You might say, why gather all this data? Because if I can find that drill bit at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico and fix it before it breaks, I save $20 billion and a whole bunch of marine life at the same time. And now computers can do all this work. I can ingest all this data, I can analyze it, and I can kick out answers to these questions at a speed that I never could have before. And most of this is good. This is good news. I can get better service. I can save lives, I can protect infrastructure, I can make companies more efficient in their supply chains. Most customers, as you see here, 86% of consumers will pay more for better service. How do I deliver better service? I can have better data, better information. And I could give you a lot of statistics about the good value or the great value that comes out of mining this data, understanding their customers, and what it does for you. Unfortunately, there's a dark side. As valuable as we think this data is, other people do too. They range from nation states, professional countries, members actually of military, trying to steal information. Professional, think of almost organized crime rings, next level of sophistication very sophisticated technological users trying to steal data. What do they want? They want your bank account information. They want your social security number. They want control of our power grids. They want control of our nuclear missile systems. They want control of you. And how do they do it? They try to get at data. Data is the commodity they're pursuing. Now, question, are we secure? 
really the theme of all this starts. So everything I've told you was just to lead you up to, there's a lot of data. It's all over the place. Generated from three primary sources with a fourth one coming. Used for good. Good reasons. Well intended. And a bunch of professionals who are trying to steal it. Governments are getting better. You've all heard of these attacks. OPM, uh, the Office of Personnel Management. Um, some people's um, uh, classified information was taken in that. Um, I know at least one of those people very, really well. Um, it's very dismaying. Target, Anthem, Chase, you, you, you hear all the brands that many of them are public. By the way, let me be clear. Many, many of them are not public. Most of the reason they are public is because there had to be a notification to a user. Many are not public for the reason they didn't need to. Companies are going to get better at this, though. I'm most optimistic about companies. Just take, for example, the Oracle database. The Oracle database can actually be encrypted. Now, encryption is a very um, interesting subject uh, this week. Um, but at its core, when a company has their data in the Oracle cloud, that data can be encrypted. So let's pretend you could get through it. You'd get gibberish. By the way, of our customers, just so you understand the work that's got to be done in companies, basically 10% of our customers have all of our security. 10%. Half of that 10% didn't install it. So 5% have actually protected their Oracle databases. And you know how much data that is. Patches are typically one year behind. Patches meaning we see all of these attacks. Most of them are SQL, well, I won't get too technical. Most of them are SQL injections, though, into memory, trying to trick the database to send the memory or the data to the memory and then take it. We see all that and we patch it. We stay one step ahead of the crooks. Most of our customers are a year behind in terms of applying those patches. But this is all getting better. All of those stats I gave you are actually going up to the right. And I believe you give companies more time because they always move faster than governments. They will, be, they will be protecting their data and your data that they have as part of their business. Real issue comes down to what's going to happen at the consumer level. As I said, the internet for next, nothing. More than 100 million sort of attacks that have occurred over the last year. The Pentagon alone, by the way, just to be clear, if you wondered of stat, they get attacked 10 million times a day. A day. We don't get attacked 10 million times a day. We get attacked a little less than 100,000 times a day from all sorts of sophisticated, up to people in their pajamas uh, in a basement to nation states that try to attack to steal data from us. Let's go to the next. Uh, I'm going to sort of conclude. I know we're going to have a couple questions afterwards, but my advice to you would be the following. When you're dealing with security, read before you click and think before you post. Because the best advice, and I got asked this this morning about you know, how I think this will all evolve when I was on campus. And I started with, governments will get this right over time. It's a bit slow. We've had some unfortunate incidents. But I believe governments over time will continue to make this better in terms of security. Companies will get it right quick. You give the companies another two, three years, the stuff that we're doing, we, Oracle running our cloud, will become the traditional way that you now protect company data. On the personal side, the best advice I can give you is no one is looking out for you. This is a personal responsibility. It's a personal decision. You need to decide what you want to put out in the public domain. You need to decide what you want to click on. You want to decide what you want to post. Because everything you click on and everything you post 
is used by someone to do something for you. And again, let me reiterate, most for good, but not all. And it's a decision that you individually got to make. So let me sort of conclude. I think I've done, ah, this is amazing. I've done this in 16 minutes, which was my biggest fear of the uh, time frame this morning. But all of this is coming very, very fast at all of us. This is a very exciting time in the industry. I think the next 10 years will be the most exciting time ever in the IT industry. And a lot of this revolving around this opportunity to do things with data that we never could have before. I, I think we should embrace all of this. This is all good news, in my opinion, not bad. I just want to make sure you know that someone is watching, someone's reading, and as much as we can do at the corporate and the government level, this decision is, is yours. So again, enormous amount of data coming. When you think of, four, by the way, that, one more time, that 45 zettabytes, since I see I have a minute left, that 45 zettabytes, I did not include that, what happens if machine to machine actually accelerates like I think it might. You could see a doubling of that. Now imagine people gathering data, not just about you, but gathering data about the things you use. That opportunity happens as well. Most of this data is getting more secure, not less. But the more security is coming at the government layer, coming at the corporate layer, and at the consumer layer, the personal layer, this is really, there's no technological trick that we have to protect you like personal decision-making, personal responsibility. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great race to the TEDx.